What is up, everybody? The Eerie Lord is back. Yes. And not only that, I have some new images for you. Well, I only have one right now. Um, kind of playing around with the design a little bit here. Um, yeah, I figured since these are the Season 11 vlogs, um, we could get our badass Commonwealth soldiers into the mix. Um there aren't many named Commonwealth people, if any, right now and where we are at the story in terms of being at the very end of the bonus episodes, except like le like leaked pictures of Mercer and a few castings, but there's nothing like official we have to really showcase, unfortunately. So for now, it's just the soldiers from the train yard that captured uh, the Eugene's group. So I'll just put this as the stock for now. I usually, and if you've noticed, when I was doing like vlogs for a certain season, when I'd have my X split set up, I'd do a couple of images below. So um, I got to make it pertinent to the season I'm covering. So I'll make it pertinent to the to season eleven. Um, so I wanted to give some love to. Um, I've done a bunch of collabs with um, the Walking Dead world. I um, mean, he's pretty up on all of his Walking Dead news and content. And I had actually seen this, so they were doing a bunch of promos, The Walking Dead. If you remember the last vlog I made, it was 11 weeks and 11 weeks of, like, promo content to, like, show different stuff from from the new season as we approach um, the start of the final season. Um, and so they're going to continue doing that. The other interesting bit of news, and I'll elaborate more on that, I was kind of surprised, and I didn't even know that there was going to be a New York, Con or not a New York Comic Con, holy shit, a San Diego Comic Con. Um, obviously, last year, it could not have happened because of all of the bullshit that was going on last year, as I'm sure you guys don't need a reminder of that. Um, but I guess with California opening they can do san diego comic-con because i've been getting newsletters from from pax like the the penny arcade expo and they've had some online events like i think they had like an online pax east or something something stupid like you know there's no reason to go to something like that like the whole joy of pax is to meet other gamers to explore indie booths like it used to be a big media event too, like some big game publishers, like 2K from like uh, from uh, you know Rockstar used to go. They I remember at one PAX East they were showing off uh, Max Payne three for fuck's sake. So you know PAX used to be like a big media thing, and then as the years went on, they kind of lost a lot of the media sponsorship, and then it became more of a of an indie thing. But you know, the, uh, there'd be no, why would I do an online thing? Well, so I could see a couple of people who I want to meet over a fucking Zoom video. Um, I mean, maybe that works for some people, but not for me. So, um, yeah, I, I thought maybe they would do an online format for San Diego Comic-Con. And maybe even if they do, they can still show the trailer. I mean, this has been a tradition for a long time, showing the new Walking Dead trailer at San Diego Comic-Con. Obviously, they weren't making anything last year because of the stupid pandemic, so they couldn't show anything at a non-existent event that didn't happen. So, last year, let's just ignore it. Most people are just kind of wiping last year from their minds altogether at this point. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we have... We have... Um, we have a trailer, I guess, we're going to get at San Diego Comic-Con. Um... I just want to search this real quick. Um, when is San Diego Comic Con 2021? 20, uh, oh, the status is no in person attendance. Let's see. Oh, the regular in person event has been scheduled to 20. However,. It'll return as an online event. We're planning a smaller supplement event called Comic-Con Special Edition. See, this doesn't make any sense to me. I thought California, and I don't want to get into like a pandemic debate here, but I thought the I thought uh, California relaxed its restrictions. Like I know it's one of the strictest states in terms of just being able to do anything, but I. 
as details still be finalized but ah uh, what the f whatever i i all right i guess they did go the route of pax east okay well then this is just going to be shown at a virtual event okay well that shows how much I know about that. I mean, I'm not following the convention circuits because, like, like you just saw, a lot of them aren't running. And for reasons, like, I don't quite understand it because a lot of restrictions, like, in my state, in Massachusetts, I mean, they were all, it was like, fuck, well, I mean, geez, it doesn't feel like it's been a month. But, yeah, it's just been a little over a month. It was at the end of May, if you are vaccinated, so... I don't know. Maybe they want more time to pass. Maybe they want, like, a certain threshold of people to get it. I, I really, I don't know. I'm not, like, in the decision-making rooms for this stuff, so I don't, I can't really offer an opinion on that. Um, but anyway, I'm going off into a huge freaking tangent about conventions in, in the pandemic. I don't know. I, I, all I was mentioning was that I'm surprised that they're showing a trailer, and I'm even more surprised. I mean, it's an online freaking format, so now they're going to show this to an online audience, and Chris Hardwick is probably going to be in that dump barn of his or whatever house that he did. He did Talking Dead for the bonus episodes. Um, I can't play this normally because it's it's like a Twitter video. Uh, so it's just a bunch of posing shots. Um, there's some zombie graffiti right there, which is pretty cool. Um <laughs> Uh, and you got a bunch of walkers in this. We've seen all of these photos. If you guys remember in the Blast vlog, we had all of those, like, character photos where they're underground in, like, that, like, abandoned military thing underground. There were train tracks, like a subway or something they were following. I'm not too sure, like, what they're doing. Um, we got Yumiko. She's not with them. Um, this is a cool shot. The state of Alexandria completely fucked up um actually is this alexand yeah it looks like the place is completely abandoned that's one popular theory and i kind of want to know if you guys think the same if they're going to abandon alexandria altogether and then just go to the commonwealth because it's a little different in the comics in the comics the hill they the the hilltop survives the whisper war like even though the barrington house burns they're still able to salvage the hilltop the kingdom is also still running even though a you know, spoiler even though ezekiel dies in the comic version he does but there's different there's like some other characters i don't think they're in the show that lead the kingdom but I guess the problem was, like, the kingdom never did, ne like, after the war with Negan, like, the kingdom never did anything. And the whole fair, like, the fair where Alpha captures those people and puts their heads on the spike, that fair happened in Alexandria in the comics, but in the show it happens in the kingdom. So the kingdom was like, again, this is another another one of Robert Kirkman's oversights in his writing. There's so many of them. I mean, that's why the Whisper arc was so terrible, in my opinion. And the show didn't, Angela Kang, and I've said this many times, but the show and Angela Kang did an incredible job of revamping that, making just making it better, giving life and character to Alpha and her whole clan and her philosophy and Lydia, like... I mean, I've said it in previous vlogs, but I just, it, it was his weakest arc, his absolute weakest arc. And again, like he just had, he, it, it was big, like similar to some of the problems that the show ran in in season seven, when Scott Gimple just had this giant monster of a show on his shoulders, where you had Oceanside, Alexandria, the Sanctuary, the Kingdom, the Hilltop, like you had so many, and then you added the Junkyard, like you just had so many things going on at once. Like, it was impossible to juggle all of that. It just was impossible to micromanage all that stuff. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, what I'm saying, what my original point was, as I try to blow my notes here, which I know on camera, I don't want to do, but it's driving me nuts. Um... I'm pretty sure, I mean, this looks like they're going to abandon it. It almost looks like they have, like, some suitcases right here. I can't really tell if that's in focus, but, like, kind of looks like they got suitcases. It looks like the door's all fucking barred up. 
Um, unless this is, I don't know if this is, I mean, it looks like it's Alexandria, but yeah, um, some of the preview photos and some of the previews I've seen other ones, like the small ones have shown that like, and we even saw at the end with the bonus episodes that Alexandria is not doing too hot and it's the last civilization that exists in that Virginia area. And, and again, in the comics, it's different. Pamela Milton, who's the leader of the Commonwealth, at least in the comics, she comes and visits all the communities. She actually, like the sanctuary, that's the other thing. In the comics, the sanctuary is still a thing. Like some of the ex-saviors are at the sanctuary, like running it as a community. So that's a, like all of like the hilltop, the sanctuary and the kingdom are all defunct in the show. And Alexandria is the last location. And so I guess is the show kind of leading you to believe that it's a lost cause and that their only hope is to go to the Commonwealth. So, so you basically centralize all the action because I think one of the last things Angela Kang would want to do, especially when you have one season left, granted it's extra episodes, if you decentralize the action, like if it's like part of it's at Alexandria and part of it's at the freaking Commonwealth, you know, you're not, you don't have enough time. Like we don't, we need time to like learn Mercer's character and learn the Commonwealth and learn things about it. And so if you split your time between two places, it's, it's going to be difficult. So, um, so yeah, it's just my opinion on it. Um, that's another shot. I don't know what the heck this is. This is a really cool shot right here. I'm actually going to take a screenshot of this right here. It's like a print screen thing. Um, the faces of random people. Actually, you know what? This, okay, this was in the comics. And I'm not sure which character. This tells me they're going to remix this with a character. So... This is some spoilers for the Commonwealth in the comics. I don't want to go too much into it, but if you guys want to listen to it, I'll talk about it for just a minute here. But basically in the Commonwealth, they have this giant billboard of like names of people. So they have like pictures and names, like they're all uh, stapled and thumbtacked and just kind of pasted onto this giant billboard. And it's people that are missing so of the residents of the Commonwealth, it's people that they are missing, like family members, friends, like anyone from before the apocalypse that they got separated from or they think is missing, they put on this board. Now, the big revelation in the comics, and it's it's different, it's going to be different because it's Michonne. Michonne is involved in the Commonwealth stuff, and as we know, her character was written out so she could not be in the show anymore, but she's also going to be on possibly potentially be in the rick grind movies but in the comics she's at the commonwealth and she actually sees uh her face on this this billboard because her daughter thinks that she's missing and miss shown's character is a little different in the comics so she you know she had a daughter that was lost and then she finds her on this billboard and um you know that's yeah that's that's one that's one big thing that comes from this so the fact that we have this that leads me to believe that they're going to actually remix that story arc so that's pretty badass to me so um again another broken okay so this probably i'm going to take screenshots of these because you guys will probably appreciate these still images um we have dog. That's the only new thing. So this is just a close up of the destroyed sections of Alexandria, but we have Daryl's dog named dog <laughs> sitting by this white door. Um, there's not much else to go off of, but again, this is just kind of confirming that Alexandria is a lost cause, which is pretty sad. Um, this is also new. I like how there's like, this goes, when you play this, it goes so fast, but this is pretty cool. So we have Mercer, and we know this because of his red armor. So we've got Mercer and two Commonwealth soldiers, and I don't know who that is, but I guess we'll find out. I'm not sure. It's none of our characters, because can't be Ezekiel, can't be Eugene. Like, any of the male characters involved with this arc have, like, crazy hair. Like, Eugene has the fucking mullet, obviously, and then 
Ezekiel has the dreadlock, so this guy's just got a kind of regular cut, so I don't think it's him. But um, um, close up on a pair of handcuffs. Um, here is Kelly using her slingshot. Someone writing a letter. That is something that I really can't see. Here's Magna um, with a mace weapon. It's pretty cool. Um, again, I'm just going to take print screens of some of these so I can document the photos. The epic end begins. Oh, shit. You will have to beg. Here is a god. You'll have to beg for my forgiveness. Uh, we have these photos. Oh, and then... Okay, this was something else I was going to talk to you guys about. Um... These guys, people think that these are the Reapers. Um, so remember that group that was like randomly mentioned by Maggie in the bonus episodes? So people think that these are the Reapers. And the interesting connection that people made was that the, the guy who's being the bodyguard for Maggie has the same type of mask. So, are we being led to believe that he was an ex-Reaper, and now he's in her service? I bet you we're probably going to get some more context to that. The only thing is that, I have two questions. Are the Reapers, assuming these are the Reapers, are they related to the Commonwealth stuff at all? And if they're not, do you think that there's going to be enough time to, like, do two villain groups to do the Reapers and the Commonwealth? Because... And the thing, they're probably going to interchange, right? And I imagine they're, maybe this is a strategy by Angela Kang. She's probably like, well, if we just do the Commonwealth, it might not feel like there's a villain. Because the thing is, like, there are bad people. It's more of a corrupt government. At least in the comics, the Commonwealth is more of a corrupt government. It's rotten. There's actually one of the comic issues is called the Rotten Core which is its symbolism towards the government, like in the leadership being rotten. It's very rich, totalitarian, kind of like, you know, rich, all the, you know, the powers at the top. And, you know, people don't have a ton, a ton of freedoms. Um, so, you know, it's not a Negan situation, but this is like a civilization. But like people have jobs where it's almost like a caste system kind of thing where like you're stuck into your jobs. There's no democracy like america where you can just kind of bounce around and you know explore different occupations there's none of that in the commonwealth there's it's all set by pamela milton and her kind of government so um the, you know they're villain and they're villainary in that sense but is it gripping enough to have them be that way i'm wondering like if they need this secondary villain group to like flesh out the commonwealth and have this be a supplement I'm not too sure. That's it. That's it. That's my assumption. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, I mean, these are, you know, these are pretty badass. I mean, but I mean, listen, we've had so many villainary groups in The Walking Dead. You know, I don't even want to list them all, but, you know, what the hell makes these guys different from fucking the claimers like Joe, Joe and the claimers or the or, or the, you know, or Terminus, the big freaking Terminus compound. Like, again, like we've had scary guys you know who yeah, i mean the saviors for fuck's sake these guys i mean the saviors basically had a presence like this where they had hundreds and hundreds of soldiers at negan's disposal he you know saved communities they were widespread you know that was the most powerful empire we've seen in this show so you know to say oh there's you know something else and i mean i don't know we'll have to see if they're worth a day i mean actually the, if we're being led to believe, it seems like they have relation to Maggie. Like, they were near where Maggie and Georgie were, and they bumped into each other, and then maybe they followed Maggie from where she was. That's a possibility, but we'll have to see. Um, I mean, this was pretty cool to... Um, yeah, the final season, part one. So maybe they'll, like, wrap up the Reapers and get deeper into the Commonwealth by the end of the first part, and then the second part will be the rest of it um uh august 22nd again this is the earliest we're ever getting the walking dead ever um 
the earliest it's been like the first or second week in uh in october is historically when we get it um but yeah this is i don't know why this is so early maybe they're just afraid that like the bonus epi like they don't want people to forget about the show with the bonus episodes and stuff like they want to keep people locked into the show and the content and they don't want people to drop off um so yeah i mean who knows we'll uh We'll have to see, um, you know, with everything going on. So, um, yeah, but that is everything. Um, I basically went through, yeah, 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 stream early. Fuck you. Um, that's everything. Uh, again, thank you to uh, The Walking Dead World. Um, my buddy Jeff, who I've done a few co-op videos with for um, allowing me to watch that video on his channel and do a bit of an analysis that was pretty cool but um yeah let me know if you guys have any theories or predictions i always love to dive into them um thank you guys for watching of course and um, i'll try to make more vlogs like this i mean again i'm gonna i'm gonna be busy um i'm actually moving from this place in just about a month so this location of what you're seeing is gonna change in a month so um i guess you know wave bye to it i don't know how many more vlogs i'm gonna make in this room but, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've made a, a decent number, um, you know, not much video game stuff. I mean, all the Ratchet and Clank stuff, obviously, that's been coming out recently. But, um, yeah, no, we've, you know, we've had a, we've had a good run here. Um, I mean, obviously a lot of it was <laughs> consumed by everything that was going on last year, but, you know, um, anyway, um, appreciate you guys watching. That was pretty cool that we were able to, like, find some like hi hidden images within the video because when you watch it it's flashing by so quickly so you don't really get to like pause it um that's what i usually do with the trailer if you guys remember for past like trailer reaction videos for any like long time walking dead fans i'd pause it at certain intervals as it was at like 20 point two five percent speed and uh, like following it and like you know a little image would come up like you'd see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see in the background because the trailers like just skip 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 through a whole bunch of stuff so you could really slow it down and kind of uh, look for clues um so uh, that's that's cool that's cool to me so yeah um and i guess We'll do the same thing when the trailer... Actually, I have something to now you know, look forward for you guys. In one month, exactly, when when the online Comic-Con happens, we can watch the trailer and um, I can do a reaction to it. I mean, I've, I, I've done it for every fucking season of the show. Um, I don't know why uh, this would be any different. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That will be that. So thank you guys, of course, as always, for watching. And uh, there'll probably be some more Ratchet and Clank content. Um, I did promise another uh, retrospective vlog. Um, now that the day is coming up, the 10-year anniversary of meeting a certain someone at a certain convention, it might be about time to make that video. And um, I'm going to definitely stir the pot in that regard so i'm gonna have to be careful but um that's fine um anyway thank you guys for watching uh there'll be more details on that later but um i will see you for now hope you enjoyed the new photos and as always comment rate and subscribe peace out